guys just want to speak to you guys about our last one standing competition with Team Fipe. It's basically a last man standing competition which is a tenor to enter and what's going to happen is on the 28th of August is when it begins. It's for eight rounds and it, as I said already it's only a tenor and what you do is you go on. It's a link in the description or the bio and you can head over, click the link, register today and what happens is the first place winner will get... 50% of the overall prize so whatever the amount of people are enter so say there's 50 people that's 500 goes into the pot 50% of that goes to the Irish Heart Foundation the other 50% goes to the winner so not only are you helping out a charity you're also helping out yourself the fact if, if you're confident that you're going to win so the more people that enter the better for you the better for the person that's involved because it means more money at the end of the table for yourselves. So check it out today, the link is in the description and the link is in the bio. Hello my Irish Football Fan TV, I'm delighted to be up in Jack Distributors with the one and only Johnson Courtney. Johnson, um, I suppose just with the centenary jerseys, talk us through them, uh, there's been a bit of, I suppose, argy badgy online, it, some people love it, some people kind of like it, some people hate it, and some people absolutely despise it. Um, I suppose just take us through the design and um, I, I, the colour inspiration and so on, and you know the, the details. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming up. Uh, firstly, but um, no, listen, like anything uh, with jerseys, when you release something online, everybody kind of has an opinion and stuff like that. And obviously we welcome that and welcome the feedback and everything. Um, I think I think what caused a bit of confusion, there was a lot of people didn't understand why we were in blue. And obviously it wouldn't be known currently as a very Irish colour, but uh, what we're trying to get the message across is, um, and I was I was saying this myself on Twitter and stuff recently, uh, it's it's literally like the, 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 the chant, if you know your history, Ireland wore blue. Uh, originally and and so it's the most authentic color that we could use to celebrate the centenary of the FAI which is obviously this year so just to give a bit of background in it um basically in uh, 1880 the IFA was uh, set up in Ireland it was the fourth uh, federation, if you like, um, or association even, that uh, was registered in football after England, Scotland and Wales. So it was it was the Irish Football Association and it was run out of Belfast and that uh, went on for about 41 years. Um, and around around 1921, uh, there was a, a lot of tension, obviously, in the air because we just had um, we just had the War of Independence and we were it was heading for the, the start of the Civil War. So uh, the IFA were running football out of Belfast, as I said. And when it came to the Irish Cup final that year, Glen Torren were playing uh, Shelburne and uh, the game finished in a draw in Belfast. And when it, they wanted to have the replay and Shelburne wanted it in Dublin and the, the IFA refused and they cited uh, it was too dangerous to go down to Dublin at the time for a northern team, etc. And that caused the uh, clubs in the south, or the free state, if you like, um, to break away. So um, they wanted to register as the FAI, um, as, as they would be known now. And it took a couple of years um, because obviously the Civil War and stuff went on. But they eventually registered with uh, FIFA in 1923 and uh, became the FAI. FS, which was the Football Association Free State. And while all this was going on, there was no, this pre predated the World Cup and European Championships, so there was no main tournament. The main tournament at the time was the actual, was the Olympics. So uh, Ireland went to represent, uh, as the Free State went to represent Ireland um, as, as the FAI at the time um, in the 1924 Olympics in Paris. And that's where we played our first game. And we wore blue uh, jerseys and we played Bulgaria in our first game first international game ever which was obviously as I said 1924 Olympics but the association effectively is registered 1921 making this year the centenary but the first game didn't play take place until those Olympics in 24 and funny little uh, just side part of that is we, we, we played Bulgaria and ironically Bulgaria actually wore green against us and we wore blue against them in the, in the first game in the very first game okay well it's fascinating kind of history a lot of stuff there that I wouldn't have, wouldn't have known obviously till now but I suppose, even like obviously, jerseys always look better 
in flesh like and I think people will get a better kind of uh, view of it now and we'll have shots of it and stuff like that but um, I suppose from the from the design of the crest looks really really well do you want to talk us through the, the design of the blue jersey and then we'll go on to the, to the goalkeeper one yeah so so obviously the blue um, the shade of blue that was officially registered at the time was called St. Patrick's Blue which is um, it's not quite royal blue um, but it's heading in that kind of general direction it's very hard um, there's there's things that we use in, in, in the sports and fashion industry for colours now called the Pantone reference book um, but most of those are done by a digital number so you know how to communicate it to factories etc but um, there wasn't that around at the time so there's no way of actually uh, getting the exact same colour equally uh, when it was uh, in the terms of black and white days there was no there's no pictures we can really access that give it the exact shade but we did find one of the original jerseys believe it or not from uh, 1924 and we what we've tried to do was match it as closely as possible considering it's 100 years old, uh, well, 97 years old, and there's been some fading, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and those things. So we've used the, our best possible guesstimate to get it as close as possible, if you like. Um, then into the crest, um, I think that, you know, I think it's probably fair to say that the current iteration of the, the FAI's crest is probably not the most loved by all the fans. I think the, the, the 88 one used to be very popular and then the one we used in, in the World Cup in 1994 and stuff as well. Um, but what we really wanted to do was harp back to... Um, the original kind of shamrock idea. Mm. Um, kind of so, reminds me of Johnny Giles. Or? Yeah, the, the 60s and 70s, we would have had probably that sprig of shamrock uh, type crest, which also the, the IRFU would have used uh, around the same time. So they were very, very similar crests. Um, but when you go back a bit further, there was also, there was times where we used just a one-off shamrock. So um, I went and looked at, God, I don't know how many shamrocks we looked at over the time, but I wanted to come up with something a little bit different and a little bit unique. So um, now most people will go, shamrock's a shamrock, but it's all about the detail and how you do it. So obviously we used the kind of shield crest. We we, we came up with this slightly unique um, shamrock in the way the execution is done. If you look at it up close, um, and we'll get some shots on that, I'm sure, for the, for the viewers now in a while. But um, y y if you look at the way the execution of the embroidery done, it's really detailed and it kind of gives a 3D effect on certain parts of it and the, the, the threads go in different ways halfway through the leaves and stuff like that so it's a really cool um, finish on it and then with the with the embroidery that we've used uh, in gold uh, to, to apply, uh, put on the application of the, of the jersey um, crest we've used kind of this disjointed embroidery uh, technique so it doesn't look like a really modern finish it looks like something that would have happened more at the time which would be a little bit more haphazard looking but that's obviously very much done on purpose to feel in feed into that uh, centenary and the historical element and then uh, the other part the shorts and the socks oh yeah well we've the, we've the also got the shorts and the socks um here uh which which are uh we've gone with an off white uh for the short um, so it's not cr it's not clean white because back in the day you wouldn't had uh, a very you, like just manufacturing process you couldn't get a an optic white uh, kind of color into the material so we've gone with an off white short and uh, the blue sock with the green turnover um, and obviously this whole kit will um, be be uh, coming in a in a, a celebration kind of box um, so so uh, this this centenary box which is green has the crest on it etc and the dates in 1921 to 2020 one and there's also a few little collector's bits in there like the the, the the tissue paper comes in and also the there's a postcard which has an image of every single home ground that the Republic of Ireland have played in since the formation of the association so whether that was um you know Thomond Park or Lansdowne Road or Daly Mount etc etc so there's an image of all the all the stadia that we've used as home games and venues in there as well. Class well uh, just a uh to go into the goalkeeper jersey then and then uh, we'll just talk about costs and so on yeah so the the goalkeeper jersey is effectively the exact same as the uh, the outfield jersey and uh, we've we've used kind of a, a yellow a bright yellow because that was the color that was used um back back by the goalkeepers at that stage and um it's literally the exact same so you know everything we've talked about is is the same bar the color um and on the back of the neck um a little detail um, is we've got the 1921 embroidered right on the back of the neck as well, just in, in gold on both of the jerseys, just to give that little, little bit of historical edge as well, you know? Yeah, just on, like I know a lot of people on Twitter is, uh, you know, going crazy about the prices if it's Umbro, but like, you aren't stocking it. It's in other stores. Like yeah, well, I, well look, the the price is always you know a bone of contention, no matter what people are doing or buying or whatever. Um, but 
Elvery's will be selling the jersey exclusively and um, that's the price that they've put out. We don't interfere with the price. They, they, they put it out at what they want. And I mean, y- you know, price on, on a, if you're buying the new FIFA game and it's, you know, 70 quid or whatever, pe- people buy it. And I, I would always argue that you get a lot more use and wear and options to use a football jersey than probably you will do with a game that you'll use for a few months and then buy the next one. Um, but that's opinions and, and, and everybody's entitled to one. So um, I wouldn't get too too tied up in that. Um, it's not an obligatory purchase. Nobody holds your gu- a gun to your head. If you want to buy it, you buy it. Yeah. If you don't, don't. Um, but look, there's, there's 2,000 pieces of this jersey. Um, and that's all there is. I've I've been speaking to the guys in Elvery's over the weekend, and this jersey doesn't launch until the first uh, week in October, and they've already sold nearly half of them. So I would, if you do want one, <laughs> and you do want to pay for it, I would suggest you probably jump on and, and get it fairly quick because um, it won't be repeated, it won't be run again. Um, the team will. Uh, we we do plan on having the team wearing it in an upcoming game, which which game hasn't exactly mm, been confirmed I was yet. Ask you that, yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, we're in the, the kit's gone off to UEFA for approval at the, at the moment so they can sign off on it. Um, but yeah, the, the team will wear it at some point and uh, we look forward to seeing it on the field because it's a, it's an intrinsic and interesting story um, and backline. And I, I like the fact that I actually I love the fact that it causes a bit of controversy, if you like, in terms of people um, uh, venting or, or their opinions and looking for information, because ultimately they will find out that Ireland wore blue and something that they probably didn't know before. Like you said, you're you're, you're a huge uh, football fan and you probably didn't know the backstory of this yeah. either. So it's it, it's um, there's a good bit of research and development gone into it. And we're very proud of it. And, and I personally I personally love it, obviously. Um, and I'm honoured to have been uh, a part of the process. But I, I, I really like it in person. I, I think I'd said it to you beforehand um, over the weekend. I was like, I'm not a huge fan on, on like retro kits or anything. But when I saw it, and I saw it lit up on uh, Ireland Soccer Shirts, Eddie's page, yep. and uh, it was well lit and it looked really good. And I have to say, it's it's really nice in person now. I, I it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting seeing our players wearing it, wearing the blue, but like I I I think the watching the goalkeepers in the yellow. I mean they're, they're usually wearing yellow anyway. Yeah. But I think it could be cool to see like a Gavin Bazunu or a Quiven Kelleher or or Darren Randolph um, wearing that yellow. But I think the blue as well. Yeah, um, it's gonna look cool seeing them and the, and the badge as well. Do you think that maybe the badge could be something going forward if it's a hit? Um, I don't know to be honest. Like it's we really developed that and I designed it from a a point of view that this was a centenary piece. Mm. Um, you know, I don't. I'm certainly not aware of any plan at the moment from from anyone in the FAI to go away from or change the current crest. Um, but uh, we'll see in the future. But actually, another thing that's probably worth mentioning is what I'm what I'm looking to do at the moment as well is uh, because because we will wear this kit and um, we'll do a unique number on it. So the the numbers that will be on the players' shirts, uh, we'll do it kind of. It'll be a kind of cream coloured number to match in with the shorts and stuff. And what I'm looking at doing at the moment is, from memory, I think something around 575 players have represented the Republic of Ireland since the formation of the FAI. And what I'm trying to do is get every single name into the into the number. So every name any, of every player that's ever played will go into the to, into the actual players' shirts number, um, which I think will be a really nice touch. And we're looking to do that on both the men's and the women's uh, versions as well. So every women's international will be on the women's one, every men's will be on the men's. So, so, so will the women be wearing uh, these as well? Um, the, the plan is obviously to get the, the women uh, sure. to wear it again. Uh, and uh, and we don't have a date and we don't have yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of the fixtures um, yet in, in, and we don't have those locked down. But um, absolutely, we'll try and get both senior international teams uh, to wear the blue as a obviously in the centenary year to, to, to mark that as a, a kind of special occasion for us. I think as well though, the fact that it's, you know, I suppose launching in October, it could be something that you could look for, like a gift for, for say Christmas or something like that. So I know we're sitting here in August, but, yeah. but still, you know, because of the launch date and stuff like that, and it is a kind of one-off thing that if, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. As I said, it, it won't be repeated. It's only 2000 and about half of them, I believe, are gone already. So um, without being, I don't know if this will ever physically make it into store because they might be sold out before okay. they come in, if you know what I mean. So um, it, it won't be rerun. Um, well, not for another hundred years anyway. Um, but I think I think that uniqueness of it, some people will buy it, keep it in the box and they will literally be collector's items. 
and I think obviously needless to say some people will wear them and, and they'll be happy to wear them as well but I, it's the blue is only available the, the, the yellow won't the goalkeeper uh, we haven't run as a public uh, offering that's just going to be for uh, the goalkeepers literally to wear um, in whatever game it may be um, but the, the, the blue is available and, and you can get it as I said now on, on Elvery's uh, for, a, for a pre-order for October Mm, absolutely well I haven't got much else to say on it um, it's huge thanks for running through the kind of the history and, and all the details about it because I was very very curious and as soon as I saw it go out I texted you straight away I said we have to do something on this so really appreciate the time for, for bringing us through it thank you very much no problem you're always welcome as you know alright guys uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments uh, do you like it do you not like it let us know and uh, don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe we'll speak to you all soon take care